Good afternoon guys and happy, I think today's Monday to all of your sunshiny faces. So guys, depending on what I end up titling this video, um, you guys might already kind of know um, what it's going to be about. Um, but I thought I would just vlog today um, and do it a little bit differently than normal vlogs, I guess. Is, well start off today guys I actually really haven't gotten anything done I didn't do anything today almost like at all um I woke up this morning actually decently early for when I fell asleep last night I don't think I fell asleep until like three o'clock but um I ended up waking up at like nine in the morning and um I took a shower because if you guys saw yesterday's vlog it was hailing last night and thunderstorming like really bad and so I did not want to take a shower in the middle of a thunderstorm so I just washed my hair this morning when I woke up um and I'm going to take another shower actually just in a little bit probably once I'm done with this video but I kind of just have had a late start to my day to begin because of all of that and stuff again like I woke up late and and then I've just um, barely really did anything at all. I got Kleenex here guys because this is probably going to be like a cry fest and um, I normally I try and keep like the vlogs and stuff like that like really positive and I don't let a whole lot of negativity into the vlogs or just like you know I try and be like a very outward positive person because I like to bring positivity um, and you know, I, I try and reflect that, I guess, kind of in the vlogs, but basically my grandma found out um, it back, I think the beginning of February, that she actually had a tumor on her lung, and um, it was like the size of like, uh, I think they said like the size of a softball, and my grandma was a heavy smoker since like I can remember, um, <laughs> I think pretty much ever since I was born, I, probably even before that, I'm pretty sure. Um, and she suffered a stroke because of that in 2012. Um, I think that she actually suffered the stroke, um, earlier, like, maybe around, like, January, February, but she didn't actually, like, get officially diagnosed that she had a stroke until I think it was, like, April or something like that. Um, and it wasn't a massive stroke. You guys have seen my grandma in the vlogs. She, um, is still very, like, cognitively there and stuff like that, and, um, you know, she just has cuts in her vision, but because of that, you know, that it has health problems, obviously, um, and, you know, because of the smoking, she suffered, you know, the stroke, and then found out that she had a, um, a tumor on her, her lungs, and, um, <laughs> I think it's just on one, I'm not sure. I don't know a whole lot of the medical stuff that's like going on or anything like that entirely. It's just, um, all I know is that she found out about this like, again, beginning of February. It was actually only a couple days after her birthday party that we ended up having after her birthday. Um, and she was having, I remember too, even like at Christmas time, I think she was saying like that she was having like back pains and stuff like that and they weren't like really bad she might have even said it like around Thanksgiving or when we saw her for Christmas um and she was like complaining kind of of back pains and stuff like that and then at her birthday party something just really like just did seem off with her like something just she just seemed really like crabby and like uncomfortable and like you know she said that she was you know I was having kind of back pains and stuff like that but she's had arthritis she um you know also has just I mean she's elderly lady she was also I think and I don't know for sure again but like when I was littler she was I think hit by like a truck or something like that like that was pulling out of like a parking lot um I guess didn't see her and I just remember I again don't remember the exact details all I know is that she was in a sling and I don't know if she had to have surgery or something like that for it but I know that that I think also ended up giving her like a lot of back pains and um you know shoulder troubles and stuff like that um like you know throughout kind of the whole years um since then but again I don't really know you know that she's been complaining about it was just you know um it wasn't like didn't strike anybody as like oh my gosh like let's get you the emergency room kind of thing or the hospital or whatnot and you know it was like a slowly progressing kind of pain I guess that you know she didn't even really pay too much attention to either but you could just tell like at her birthday party something was off and just a couple days after that she ended up 
you know, saying like, okay, that's it. It's not going away. You know, she thought maybe too. I mean, she's had spills in the past. She's fallen off a bike. She ended up falling one time and breaking her tailbone. This was all before her, she had her stroke too, guys. Um, my grandma's just a, a klutzy lady, I guess. And so, um, she ended up, you know, she's had plenty of spills before, fallen over and things like that. Um, and then even too after her stroke, I mean, she again has cuts in her vision. She can't see everything and she has had, you know, spills and stuff. Um, even at her assistant living care you know she's fallen over and stuff like that um even to one time when we were at the hospital she ended up getting tangled up in something she's fallen over and so you know we didn't know if maybe it was from a slip or a fall or something like that that possibly she was having this pain she had said like there was no spill or you know any tumble that she ended up taking that she could remember that would have caused you know like this pains and stuff like that and so finally it was just enough that she couldn't take it anymore and she decided to um go to the hospital and so they took her assisted living took her I guess like in the ambulance or whatever and took her to um the emergency room and they ran tests tests and things like that and then or scans or whatever and they found out that she had this and then the next day or whatever um I think she ended up finding out that it was cancerous and this was like only back in like February and since then she's had um multiple other tests to see she is only at like a stage two three right now she also had a uh, fluid in her lungs too um i guess because of this tumor that was on her lung and so they ended up removing i think about like i don't think it was a liter maybe like a half i think it was like a water bottle size amount i think or close to that again i don't know the complete details of fluid that was in her lungs and pretty much so when she found out about this, it was again, maybe around February 1st or something. And um, then a couple days, whatever was after that was the Super Bowl. And we ended up having her over for um, the Super Bowl. And, um, you know, she was fine. She had like an oxygen tank that she would just bring with her that she could use if she needed to use it. It wasn't like a, like, she needed oxygen all the time like because she couldn't breathe or whatever but she was having like a little bit of trouble you know breathing or if she was walking long distances the doctor said that she should use the oxygen um but they eventually ended up this was a couple weeks afterwards ended up removing the liquid and stuff like that that was in her lungs but was also causing a lot of problems and um then just you know again I'm gonna be all over the place here guys with all this information because um I don't again totally know all the details to everything and my brain is sporadic right now too basically between like the i think the last test where they ended up removing the the um the fluid in her lungs which the last test that they really needed to do before they could give a definitive treatment was to figure out if the the fluid was cancerous or not and the fluid came back negative and um they said you know that what they could possibly do now the type of cancer that she actually has is i have no clue the name of it i honestly guys i'm completely like i said in the dark really when it comes to all the terminology or any of this stuff um that my mom kind of was explaining to us but it's like a hybrid cancer kind of of like two different types of cancer and it's a very 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 rare form of it and it's most predominantly in men not women because i guess men tend to be heavier smokers and it is like you know from smoking and like it is a very aggressive form of cancer but because it is you know very rare and it's very rare especially in women um you know the the doctor her doctor said that I don't know if it was that he had never seen it or had never seen it in a woman in his years of you know doing cancer treatments and stuff like that or you know exactly what it was or if he it was actually he contacted another doctor that had said that who was even longer in the practice or whatever i'm again not totally sure but you know that it is like extremely rare it's only again between like a stage two or three it hasn't spread really anywhere um i guess and it's just like the size of the tumor though i mean it's it's huge like i said it's like the size of like a grapefruit i think or softball size something like that it's a very very large tumor and it's rapidly growing because again between um february when she was you know pretty much completely fine 
um, not, not completely fine, but, you know, she didn't eat oxygen. She was still up walking around, you know, she came, like I said, to, um, you know, our Super Bowl party that we had, and, um, you know, she ended up having, um, you know, eating and everything like that. Now, between then, which was, again, first, second week of February, whatever it was, now at the, what is this, the third, third or so, fourth week of March or whatever it is right now, within that, like, two or so months that it's been she is like completely she can't breathe pretty much without the oxygen um i saw her on saturday which i haven't seen her since like maybe the end of february or something like that maybe, maybe i don't know all i know is that like she did come over to our house um because my mom had to take her to some appointment and the appointment got like rescheduled when she was there and something like that and all the time got screwed up so my mom brought her back to our house and she was just like there for like maybe 30 minutes or something like that and then left again and it was like during the day when Matthew and Jack were still pretty much at school and stuff but um that was the last time that I had saw seen her up until Saturday and then um on Friday she was um Originally, she said that she wanted to do chemo because it would shrink, what they were hoping is that it will shrink the um, the tumor down, hopefully small enough so that they could perform surgery. And the reason I guess they can't do surgery on it, um, like immediately or like right now, is because it's too close to, I think like her windpipe or trachea or something like that. Some breathing apparatus in her, I'm not sure again totally um, exactly what it is, but something that she needs to breathe, it is too close to and they're way too scared to do surgery for it. So the only option that they'd have is to shrink it down with chemo um, and do and perform surgery. And um, so on Friday, my aunt, my mom's kind of been sick this week. So my aunt, her sister ended up taking her to um, the place because she wanted to go through with the chemo. She went on Friday to go get like um, vitamin shots and like, you know, things to kind of boost her up because she is really, really weak. Um, and on Friday, she decided that she didn't want to do chemo that she wanted to go into hospice care because she just she thinks that she's like too weak to be able to you know do it and you know on top of that you know it might not work she might be putting herself through chemo and you know it doesn't work and you know it's not like it's her choice it's whatever she wants to do and you know at the rate that it's been going again, you know, less than two months to see how she was totally fine, you know, like at, our, at their Super Bowl party and even too when she did end up coming over to now, she can barely speak almost at all. Um, I mean, not, not at all, but she, when she talks, it's like she can't finish the last of her words. She'll say like, like it in like just a breath that like, she's not finishing like I don't even know I have actually a voicemail on my phone that I can actually play for you guys so you guys can kind of hear what it sounds like so this is pretty much what it sounds like and it will kind of sound bad too because you know the audio and everything like that through the phone but um you can hear her at the end of this like she can't breathe like there's like a breath of air that like just comes out when she tries to finish a word and here, I'll just play it for you guys. Hi, Kayla. It's Kayla. Call me when you get it. Um, thank you. And she she had somebody call for her. That was um that was actually I don't even remember when. I think that was um actually much earlier. That was actually much earlier in the month and so I mean, since then, too, it's just, like, she can barely breathe. She actually called me on the phone this morning because she, my mom ended up putting her laundry away, and she could not find her bed sheets, and she was freaking out about it. She's like, Kayla, can you have your mom call me? Which she hasn't been able to, like, call, use the phone or anything like that recently. Um, she's kind of had to have other people, her nurse's aides or whatever, call out for her. And, um, she, this morning though, she, she called me by herself to complain about her, um, her sheets that she couldn't find them apparently. Um, so yeah, we got, we got that resolved this morning, but, um, you know, her, 
it's really hard especially to hear her over the phone and hear what she's saying and um like when we were there on Saturday she just like she wasn't good I mean like I knew again like the last time I had seen her you know she was still fine she wasn't using the oxygen she's on oxygen permanently now and like you know so I knew that and you know I knew about the the voice thing too pretty much because she was um you know I would still talk to her on the phone and stuff like that it's just I hadn't like physically seen her because she was at like all the doctor's appointments and stuff and then when she wasn't she was sleeping so um you know doing all these tests and so then on Saturday you know I went because you know she decided you know that she just wanted to go into hospice care so she's still going to be at her apartment and stuff like that but she'll just have like a specific designated like hospice nurse and stuff like that and um you know it's it's tough because for me again like I can't make her make a decision to like try chemo or anything like that or you know do anything like that but anyways guys though I guess the reason that I'm even like telling you guys this or doing this this these videos or anything like that is because like on Saturday me and my mom like talked for like a really long time like several hours which me and her really like don't do that that often but she said that it would probably be helpful for me to like vlog about it just because I do that anyway. The one thing for me that has come out of vlogging, you know, I, I, I didn't start vlogging, you know, when I, when I did start, I didn't do it because I was like, oh, I want to be, you know, like have a million subscribers and I want to, you know, just like do the easy thing, make money and stuff like that and just share my life. Like, um, you know, that that wasn't really why I started doing it. It was more or less because, I mean, I've told you guys when me and Matthew were little, we used to always record with our big old, you know, VHS video recorder that was like this giant thing. Um, you know, it was like the size of a computer monitor pretty much. Um, you know, we used to do that all the time when we were little and, you know, going back and watching those memories was just like, you know, you get so emotional when you watch that kind of stuff. Like, you know, and you know, I, I, again, I, I'm not, like, posting videos on YouTube or anything like that so that I can, you know, have millions of subscri subscribers. Right now, I've got, like, I think less than or around, like, 250 or something like that, and I've been vlogging for three years. So, I haven't even, like, averaged 100 a year or anything like that, and that wasn't why I started. I love everybody that I can share my journey with and, you know, just, like, share my daily life and stuff like that, and again, I like to share that positivity and stuff and so that's why this is like really difficult for me because I'm not like a really emotional per person and stuff and so you know sharing about my grandma and stuff like that is just it's gonna be really difficult but you know that's what me and my mom had kind of said you know she was like you know it might help just to like talk about it and stuff like that and through hospice they do have like counselors and stuff like that that you can talk to and make appointments with and things um if you you know would like to and you know my mom kind of said that like everybody in our family is pretty much going to because you know, it's going to be difficult, but, you know, just another outlet and to share what I'm going through and so that I can go back one day and, like, you know, not only watch the videos that have my grandma in them, but also just because, like, um, you know, I want to still be able to go back and, you know, if I, um, you know, the one thing, too, that my mom said is, like, to journal all the memories that I have with, you know with my grandma and like the good or the bad you know and stuff like that and just like journal all of those and, but for me I'm not like a writer I don't like writing I like expressing myself I guess more in in you know not a visual way but like over video and like talking about it because I'm a talker <laughs> this is what I do um and you know I the way I express myself you know um, whether it be facial expressions or hand gestures and things like that. For me, if I go back and were to then watch these videos, I would be able to, you know, like, remember those things or the way that I'm feeling or the things that I'm saying or whatever. And, um, uh, and, you know, I want to post those, like, the memories or the things that I remember about, you know, my grandma and, um, uh, and, you know, I don't want to just, like, start posting them randomly, and, um, especially if they are in, 
uh, you know, a, a vlog and nobody really even knows what's going on. Like, why are you just randomly saying this stuff, you know? But then two, just, you know, because I, I would also want to help anybody else that is going through the same thing or has gone through the same thing or whatever, um, you know, and, you know, not because I'm a counselor or anything like that or because, you know, I, I know what, you know, a right way to kind of like go through any of this kind of stuff or, you know, but if, you know, something that I were to say would help somebody else, I would feel like, you know, everything that, that I'm doing on YouTube or, you know, like my grandma even too, like that it would help somebody else. And then all, but also to just like, remember my emotions going through this because like I said, I don't want like, you know, in 10 or 20 years from now to like, not, you know, I don't want to say feel the same pain, but like, I don't want to forget or lose the emotion that like I feel for her. And you know, if I can just keep it like, again, on a video that I can go back then one day and watch because you know, that's why I started vlogging to begin with is, you know, more for me and my family, you know, and anybody else that wants to follow us, you know, to go back and watch old videos. And, you know, it is probably the biggest blessing ever because I can and I can go through and, you know, see all the videos of my grandma and, you know, I, I won't forget her because of, you know, this blessing that is like YouTube and vlogging. And, you know, you wouldn't have thought, I wouldn't have thought that, you know, like, I don't even know. It's just, it's a lot right now. And, you know, I, I, I would assume that over the course of, like, the next couple of days is pretty much just going to be the same thing of me talking. Because, again, I haven't really been doing a whole lot. Um, but, um, I don't want to make this one video really long. I guess the hardest part that it, it is right now is that, like, you know, my grandma is still alive right now and you know it it's just like it's hard because it's like you're grieving or you know you've started grieving for somebody that you really haven't even lost yet and you know I mean like pretty many that doesn't know she's going into hospice care and it's inevitable that you know she she's not gonna get any better basically all that they just are gonna do to her or do for her is just make her comfortable you know and um the hardest part like right now is just you know knowing that you know I don't know because again like I said it's not that you know I wanted her to like you know or I, I'll, I would make her try chemo or whatever but it just I feel like it'd be easier if there wasn't like any options if it was just like you know she's terminally ill because then like in the back of your mind you kind of always like are just thinking I mean you know and like I said she's extremely you know frail and you know stuff like that and honestly the odds of chemo at this you know even actually working are you know insanely slim you know and it wouldn't be fair to be like you know that you know, we would want her to do something like that, that she, you know, would basically just be putting her, you know, through, you know, more pain and stuff just for it to, you know, not work. I mean, yes, there's a chance that it could, but, you know, my grandma is, you know, she's a small, frail woman anyway, and, you know, she is, you know, has suffered a stroke already and you know all these other complications and stuff like that and on top of that too you know having to go through a massive surgery where they're they would have to you know like crack her ribs and to open her lungs up and you know if and when the you know can cancer the tumor get would get small enough you know to go through a massive surgery like that the last surgery that she had gone through she barely made made it out um she had to have a huge um like bypass done and I mean that was really bad and her recovery time was a really long time and you know at, at her age she's 70 something it's just the likeliness of her actually coming out of this is insanely slim and um and on top of that you know it just wouldn't be fair but 
like I said, I feel like it'd just be easier if it was, you know, like, there is no option. You know, she isn't terminally ill yet. She's, like I said, stage two or three. I just, I feel like for me personally, it's just, I feel like it, it's, you know, would be easier just to, like, let her go and just, you know, to know, like, there's nothing left or even like for her to just try chemo and then for her to just be like no that's you know it's too much I can't do it or whatever just to know that there was no other option you know that was it but in the back of my mind I just feel like it's always going to be kind of just like that little thought like that little what if what if it had worked or like what if it would have you know or whatever um so I guess like you know, this is just my own personal kind of feelings. It's just, I feel like it would, would be easier just to know, like, there's nothing else they can do. There's, you know, none of that. It's just, you know, like I said, I feel like in the back of my mind, it's always going to kind of be that, you know, that slight, just, just tiny little bit of hope that there possibly was, um, you know, but at the same time though, too, I would never ask her to like, go through something or, you know, be not, you know, be put into more pain or, you know, just to find out, like, that the chemo just, you know, ex drag her life on just to, you know, leave her in pain for, you know, a year, you know, or something like that. Whereas, you know, she can spend who knows how long, um, you know, comfortably, I guess, you know, but I don't know. It's just, like, Saturday was difficult kind of like after we, I saw her like Friday night was when you know she called my mom and I heard her talking to my mom saying like you know that she didn't want to go through with the chemo and then on Saturday morning was when my mom told us you know that she didn't want to do it and at first I didn't really like think on Friday like I kind of did but I'm, I didn't really and on then on Saturday morning when my mom told us, you know, like, I got emotional over it, and then, you know, Saturday afternoon was when we went to go see her, and then Sunday, like, all day yesterday, I mean, I was, like, if you guys probably watch my, my meal prep from this week, I was all choked up pretty much in that whole video, it, I could barely, like, talk <laughs> to finish it, I, like, couldn't hardly do that, and, and then today, I mean, on top of that, waking up and just having a, you know, the, having to take a shower this morning and just other things and stuff like that, um, you know, I just, it's difficult because it's, like, you just have this, like, this constant, like, sadness. I just feel like that no matter what I'm doing, like, if I'm, like, not alone, but if I'm just, like, left with my own thoughts, like, I just get so emotional, and I'm just upset at myself, because I'm, like, you know, I know my grandma wouldn't want me to be wasting my time, you know, like, crying every, like, 10 minutes, or, you know, getting emotional, and stopping, and thinking about something, and wasting, you know, 45 minutes just to, like, think about something, you know, or, like, trying to remember something, or, you know, whatever I w I'm doing, you know, instead of just, like, doing what, you know, she would want me to be doing, cooking, baking, you know, doing my videos, or whatever, but that's why, like, today, I had to, like, just watch YouTube, because it was the only thing I felt, felt like, actually distracted me, like, I was doing the dishes, it took me, like, 45 minutes to finish the dishes, because every, like, 10 seconds, I started thinking about something else, and I was like, oh, I wonder if I have, like, you know, I don't know, a, a birthday card from her or something like that. And then I go through my birthday cards and I'd be like, okay, I have one from her. You know, just, like, something. Like, just random. Or I'll be like, oh, I wonder if I have a picture of me and her on Facebook or something. You know, like, I don't know, just random things that I'd randomly think about that, you know, like, don't even hardly seem to make sense or just old memories and things. And that's why, like I said, I want to just, like, write them down and stuff like that. But, you know, it's just... I just keep thinking about them, and, you know, I feel like talking about it does make it a little bit easier, and so, like, I'm not, you know, constantly thinking about it, because I feel like once I say it out loud, then it's, like, in the universe, and it's not in my head anymore, 
but it's just really difficult because like I said I could only watch YouTube today because it's the only thing that was like stopping me from every three seconds but I don't even know how to describe it either it's like this like you know that you're distracting yourself like because you still feel it it's like you know almost like when you have a cold or something and you just kind of take medicine and it kind of dulls your symptoms a little bit but it doesn't really totally help it's kind of like how I feel right now with just like I just it's like in my whole body I just feel like sad and no matter like what I'm doing like yesterday I you know would watch the Hawks game and like they they ended up scoring three goals in like 34 seconds I think yesterday during the game and you know like 30 for 34 seconds I was just like so excited about the game and then all of a sudden and, you know I got this super you know excited uh, you know about the game and you know all of a sudden then I was just all sad again and it's like you know I know that it's it's normal and stuff like that but it's just upsetting to me because I like you know I want to have that time where I can just be like okay I want to just take this time to you know talk about it or to cry about it or whatever and then go and move on and go and get things done because you know I know that's what my grandma wants me to do you know she doesn't want me to just be sitting here all the time just being like you know so upset you know and things like that she wants you know I know that like she wants everybody to still be happy not happy <laughs> over you know this but you know just still living our lives and I feel like I'm not I'm just like slumping around right now and it was the same like feeling for me though like you know the first couple days after you know you lose a pet you just feel this like oh my gosh everything you see reminds them of them and like I said my grandma's not even gone yet it's just like you know my mom even said like the grieving process has started like you we know that it's inevitable you know and me like again when I lost my pets which is you know I, I mean the only family members I've ever lost is my great uncle and both of my great grandparents and I lost my great grandparents when I was like five or six or something like that I was little and didn't really know what was going on and with my great uncle you know I mean it was like kind of tough but we didn't you know we saw them maybe like twice a year and you know they weren't like huge factors in our life where we were always with them and stuff and I lost him maybe in like I think in eighth grade because I remember doing a project in the car ride, you know, because this funeral was right after school. Um, I was working on something. <laughs> random, random thought, guys. I just, how I remember things, I have no clue. My memory is, like, really strange. <laughs> but, um, anyways, you know, I just, I've never lost anybody that's been, like, close, like an aunt or an uncle or a cousin or, you know, a, um, you know, a you know family member in our interior house you know really that you know my grandma's lived with us for you know I don't even know how many years so that's why I think that that on top of it is really difficult but it's also difficult too because you know then she moved to her assisted living you know and things were like so good like you know I would call her you know a lot on the phone and talk to her like almost all the time you know even if I didn't see her that often like I would talk to her and you know she just was like doing so well and that's the other thing that I feel like is really hard is that she was doing so well there and she was living her life like you know it, to the fullest I feel like that she could you know whereas you know and that's why it's hard to see her you know like not doing so well now because she was you know she was going on all these trips and you know making all these friends and doing all this stuff and that's the other thing that's really hard whereas where she was living with us she wasn't you know like doing all that kind of stuff and she wasn't like you know being really like you know not not active but you know she just wasn't like you know um I don't know what the word is like um you know pushing herself to do like all these things like I think I think she said she went on a boat ride or something like that and my grandma was terrified of water but like all these things that she would never ever do and especially like under like my mom's care or anything like that but when she was living on her own now she like had this newfound like confidence kind of in herself and that's why the other thing is just like that it's difficult to see her you know 
almost like, you know, here's my grandma, like, before she had her stroke, right? And then when she had her stroke, she's down here. And, you know, she wasn't, like, pushing herself. She wasn't doing things. You know, she just kind of accepted that I had a stroke. I'm just going to kind of do whatever. And then, you know, once she moved into her sister's living, she was back up here, you know, almost at the same as before she had her stroke, you know, and pushing herself and doing all this stuff. And that's why it's just so difficult. Whereas I feel like, if it was just like up here she before she had her stroke and then she's like down here after and then you know now we find out that she has cancer it almost be easier because it's kind of like this gradual deterioration kind of thing I guess and not that it'd be easier but I feel like just like just in a sense of like you know that someone's health is failing them and that's how it felt like when she was you know not pushing herself to do things and you know she just she wasn't doing well but then all of a sudden she moves into this place and it's like she has this whole newfound like light in her you know kind of thing to do all of this stuff that you know she wouldn't have ever done before or you know that you know she would just push herself to do things and you know just you know living her life playing bingo every single day <laughs> you know I know that doesn't sound exciting but um you know that's just like she loved doing that kind of stuff and you know to have her do that and then, you know, have that, I guess it's good because, um, you know, I feel like it'd just be easier if it was a, like a slow, you know, um, you know, her slowly digress, digressing, what is the word I'm looking for there? I think somewhere along those lines, but her just, you know, not doing well and it was kind of being like a gradual downhill kind of thing would, you know, make it easier I think in my brain personally just to be like you know she she isn't doing well you know she hasn't been doing well since her stroke but it was like she went back up like she had this spike and you know like I'm grateful for that because she did then she did she does get to live her life like going out with a bang kind of thing um you know and getting to relive all this stuff for like the last two years or you know or so or year and a half or whatever that she's moved into her assisted living but you know that she has you know all that stuff and you know all of those things that you know we know that she got to do and she got to experience and stuff like that um you know is it's it's hot and cold it's for me it's like again I feel like it'd be easier to accept it, it the fact if you know again her health was deteriorating and you know you knew kind of like something like that was going to happen but for me it was like she's doing so well and you know it's hard to because I didn't think I'd ever like lose my grandma when I'm you know 20 21 years old you know because I got to you know my great grandparents got to live to see you know Matthew I think when he was a year old and you know again I was five six years old or something like that when I got to meet them and you know I never thought I'd lose her you know um you know when I'm like this young and Jack you know there's so much stuff that she'll she'll never get to like experience or you know we never get to have her there for like you know weddings and and graduations and you know that's the other thing that's just really tough I feel like for me and no but that was the thing was that like her living at her assisted living was like I could see her making it you know that far and her still doing so well and you know her being able to see her great grandkids or you know being able to see our weddings or you know graduations and stuff like that and that you know that she won't or you know we won't have her there for it's just you know because in my mind I just you know you never think that you're gonna lose like a parent or grandparent or you know really close family member you know like early on in your life um you know, like I said, especially because, you know, I get to live to see, you know, my great grandparents and, um, you know, they're, you know, they got to live to see me. And so I always thought, you know, I'd at least have until then, you know, I think my mom was like maybe around 30 or so, which I mean, is only like 10 years from now for me, I guess, you know, the thing for me is that I had that idea in my head that, you know, that was, if I got to do it, you know, that 
or, you know, my mom, I guess, got to experience her grandparents, you know, meeting their great grandkids and stuff and getting to see them get married is just, you know, for me, that's difficult to, you know, know that that happened for my mom, but, you know, I won't get to that and I won't get to experience that. And, you know, it's not like I don't have, you know, my grandparents on my, my grandpa who was married to my grandma. And he's remarried. My dad's side of the family don't really see that often. Um, and so, you know, it's not like that, but it's just different with my grandma because she's my mom's only child and, you know, I'm her only granddaughter and she, you know, she's lived in our house for so many years that it's just like very, very difficult. I think for us, because she's our closest grandparent for all of us, but I have no clue how long this video is. I think I made it way too long, um, and I have no clue how much I'm going to have to cut out of it, because um, I think I've been talking for close to an hour right now. I don't know how much it's going to get edited down, but <sighs> yeah, guys, um, like I said, the next couple of vlogs, I'm sorry that they're not going to be like normal kind of, you know, daily vlogging vlogs um I mean I might kind of do that but like I said it's just been really difficult but like right now I actually feel a lot better I feel like right now than I did like yesterday because again I've been able to kind of talk about it and get it off my chest you know and hopefully I'm not just like you know, it's really hard, I feel like, at nights for some reason because it's it's dark out and um, I don't even know. Like, it's just, it's lonely kind of in our house, too, at nights. And, you know, that's when I'm by myself more. Um, like, between, like, kind of Matthew and Jack are kind of settling down for the night and, you know, and my m mom and dad and when, you know, like, but between Matthew and Jack getting home from school, that's the best. But, like, today I was home all alone by myself because my mom was with my grandma. And that's the other thing, too, that I'll maybe talk about more in tomorrow's video. But just about, like, whether or not, you know, my mom had already talked about it. Like, to see my grandma like that because Saturday was, was really difficult to see her that way. And, um... And that's the other thing is just like, you know, I want to remember my grandma as, you know, the lady even before the stroke, you know, and after and all the, the other things. I don't want to remember her sick. And, you know, I mean, it's inevitable she is sick, but it's just hard, you know. And that's the thing that I'm struggling with, though, is to know whether or not, like, I should be there for her or, you know, she wouldn't want me to be there for her because she wouldn't want me to see her sick you know like she hasn't said anything yet whether or not she does like I think it was a surprise I came on Saturday at all to her um but like I said it was just really difficult and my mom's kind of already said that she doesn't want Matthew and Jack to go and see her like that and you know like I remember when my great grandpa passed away we went and saw him like within I think the week that he passed away and you know he was just laying there and you know like I feel like that maybe would be easier but I don't know like you know she could go tomorrow you know or something like that you know when she's just but you know it was just difficult because she was like trying to still talk and um I mean, she's still there. Like I said, she was calling me this morning about, um, you know, not having the sheets. It's not like she's, like, completely out of it and anything like that. It's just, it's hard to see her, you know, with her oxygen and, you know, not being able to hard, you know, or ha struggling trying to talk and, you know, being really sick and in pain and, you know, she was really nauseous and, you know, it's just really difficult to see her like that. But that's the other thing, like I said, that, I'm just, I don't know what to do about, because I don't know if I want to see her, you know, in pain, and I don't want to see her, like, sick, but I also want to be there for her. I feel like Saturday, like I said, was 
good for both of us because she knows that, like, you know, I understand the decision that she made and, um, you know, like, I support her decision, you know, whether or not it's easy for me, um, but, you know, I think that she was happy and, again, it's just, like, difficult again I don't I don't know what to do but I'm sorry guys today's video is dragging on way too much um maybe tomorrow can be about good memories about grandma that would be really nice um instead of you know kind of this but like I said you know just whenever I feel like I need to update you know it might be a daily vlog tomorrow kind of thing and you know, I might just randomly spew little information in there about it, but yeah, it's way too late and I don't even know if I'm going to have enough room on my Mac to actually even edit this whole video, so I'm sorry guys. Um, I will see you guys all tomorrow though. <sighs> Goodness. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll see you guys all tomorrow, so bye guys.